Hey, you AT aliens. This is Rory and Maul, and we are coming to Atlanta, November thirteenth, center stage. And we hope to see you all there. Get your tickets now, so we can have a lot of fun. We love Atlanta. We always have a lot of fun. Are in Atlanta, they AT Rory. aliens now? I feel like New Yorkers are the aliens. Yes, New York are New yeah. Yorkers are the aliens. Atlanta took over everything. Yeah, they did. But we'll be there November thirteenth. Hope you get your tickets now, so we can have a great night in Atlanta. Hopefully, some special guests will come out. Some of our friends in the city. Absolutely. We'll have fun. See you soon. No worry, and Welcome, welcome, welcome to a new episode of the new Rory Mall podcast. The newest I am Mall. episode. I am Rory. And we are back. Rory, we are back from London, yes. man. We are back on U.S. soil. Ooh. You can just feel the poverty. You can just feel the... <laughs> 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 Fucking the air's different. You can just feel the tax rate. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sick already. Oh, no. We're the uh, not try to get sick boys. For the yeah. people that are really watching this, it's it's tea everywhere. Yeah. Look, we come like, from, from London. We tea. took that from London. Yeah. yeah. Straight back from London. Um, yeah, I fucking fucked around and fell asleep with the AC on one night. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was. Because, you know, the windows didn't open in the hotel. So okay. I couldn't get no air. It was hot as fuck when I woke up. I was sweating. I said, I got to turn the air on. I thought the air would cut off after it reached a certain temperature in the room. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought too. Woke up four hours later, AC was still booming. Did you have to do the Celsius uh, converter? No. Because I, I was very confused as to what the right temperature I just, would be. I just looked at, at my Celsius. phone. I just said, okay, what is 27 Celsius? And it was like 80 something. I was like, okay, gotcha. you don't want it that hot. F- fair. Okay. But, have, you ever, um, have you ever gotten mono? No. Okay. Neither have I. <laughs> Y'all know anyone that's got mono? I got mono. Of course you, you would. Have. Julian would have you mono. You would be the one that has mono. Julian, you definitely kiss chicks as soon as you meet them on the dance floor. Baby D, have you given out the mono before? I actually have never had mono that I know of. Yeah, girls don't really get mono because freshman year of college is when I got it. So, Like, late, uh, not the 90s? But I'm sure people have It's had... like getting polio. <laughs> How sure... are you still getting mono out here? I'm sure I mean, this people was like have 2010. had mono and not known that it was mono. Because it just, it, it presents as like the flu, right? I had it with bronchitis and then I couldn't sleep. Like I legit couldn't breathe for three nights. It was do, the do worst. Do you know the culprit? Do no, you know the chick he was, no, he was sucking no. face with? He doesn't. No. Julian doesn't know. He doesn't remember his nights. <laughs> there was a couple was nights a couple he couples. doesn't remember. You know he lives by that. Oh God. He, does, he wakes he up to forget. not remember with, people that With the people forget. we can't forget. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we're back from London. London was amazing. Yes. I cannot wait to get back. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but. Can't wait to get back and mm-hmm. um, experience some more London. Maybe when it gets a little warmer, though. You need to go when the weather is nice. It's a little warmer so we can really just be out walking around, not have to worry about being it's raining the whole time. bundled up. Yeah. Here's the, the thing. Rain. I want to rent a car next time we go because it's impossible to get an Uber out there. But also traffic I don't know is why a Rory fucking nightmare. That. Every time I, I called the Uber, it said two minutes. I was with Rory, though, one night when we had it, the last night we went out for dinner. <laughs> he, we tried to flag down three different cabs. Didn't called happen. like four or five Ubers. It was a process. Yo, one cab we finally got said, you're going in the wrong direction. I was like, you can't just tur- turn around? <laughs> Bro said, which way are you going? He looked at the phone. He goes, oh, that's that way. And points behind him and then just speeds Fam, off. <laughs> wide open U-turn right where he was, too. Yeah, I, I didn't have any bad experiences with the Ubers. Me neither. Ubers pretty efficient as far as, as whenever I needed one. Don't do that. Ed and I were trying to go sightseeing. We couldn't get an Uber. We oh, couldn't get a, a, t- yeah, a cab. Right. We couldn't yeah. get shit. We couldn't have on a special date. Really? <laughs> yeah. That, that sucked. Cool. It was also just raining. I feel that like could, they, yeah, they but that crazy. doesn't matter, man. It's London. It's yeah. always raining. It's always raining. It's not so. a fair excuse. But it, either way, it was a great time. Had a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. We do need to spend, I feel like we need to spend more time out there. We need to spend at least two weeks out there. I would say three because okay. it's so close to so many other cities that I yeah. would want to have that travel. type of experience. Definitely want to get to Paris, want to get to uh, Spain at some point, uh, Barcelona for sure. Um, but shout out to all the people that came out to London. Thank you for the love. It was amazing, humbling experience. I still can't believe so many people came out to, to support us and kick it with us and so many kind words and just uh, so many dope people that we met. Um, I don't know. But I, you had some... Uh, well, no, I mean, the people that have listened, we, we did record in London, but the show and a bunch of days afterwards did happen. So there is more to update the people outside of the box experience that you guys had. Yeah. If you want to hear that experience, please go to episode... 117. 117 to hear Julian and, and Maul's uh, extravaganza. Shout out to the legend, Rosewood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Kitty Cat, wherever you are, we have so many more milks. Is, uh, 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 so many more milks for us to explore, I promise you. Is she your uh, treacherous twin? Uh, I, I, yeah. would, I, would, I would love Kitty Cat for is Kitty definitely Cat. your treacherous oh, twin. I would love for her to be my treacherous twin. Did you call her that? Did you whisper that? No, I wish I would have. While the, mic, the milk the song, I don't think the album was out yet. Okay. When we went to the box. Yeah, but I feel like you would have thought that, that when you saw it. It came out that night. Yeah. Sure when you listen to the album and you're like, finally, I feel seen, Drake, that's what I couldn't yeah. say to this woman. 
Oh, oh man, Kitty Cat is didn't amazing. have the right She's words. <laughs> um, but we had a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. The and, show uh, was incredible. The show was uh, amazing, amazing. We had some technical difficulties, but that's okay. We worked through it. We got around that. Um, for those that don't know, Maul and I kind of freestyled that entire show for two hours. Um, a lot of our show is based around the projector and segments and videos and intros and all this other great shit. I was kind of upset because we weren't able to give our full out experience uh, for our first time there together. So it was kind of like, you know, back in the dressing room, I was a little upset, a little annoyed. Like, fuck, I was, I really wanted to give London our full experience, our yeah. full live show experience. We weren't able to, but we still went out and gave what I believe was a great show. A lot of the people seemed to enjoy it. They seemed to love it. Um, what, one it, of the best crowds ever. I know we're not supposed to like, no, no, I know no. every city is supposed to be the best crowd ever. No, no, that London crowd by mm-hmm. far was which one is, of the best crowds I've ever stood in front of. Which is why I feel so pessimistic. Like, cause we got off stage. I was like, wow, that, and usually, you know, I hate shows no matter what. I'm like, I think it was bad. Yeah. I got off stage. I was like, that went incredible. That crowd was so much fun. Then my pessimistic mind took over and was like, damn, what if they got the real show? Yeah. Like that could have been the greatest show ever. Well, that's more of a reason why we got to go back. Yeah. We got to go back, go back uh, sometime next year for sure. And I'll give them a full experience. By that time, we'll have a whole different show put together for them. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, definitely want to spend more time on the ground out there in London. Uh, Thank you to Gigs, everybody that checked in on us, made sure we were good out there. Yes. Um, Gold Link, everybody. (laughs) Shout out to Gold Link. Um, shout out to Nada for showing us a good time. Uh, we went to, so while we were there, we wanted to experience some of the nightlife culture mm-hmm. in uh, in London. Obviously, went into the went to the box. Well, after the show, I, I definitely wanted to because I thought London was going to be really proper at the show, and we you know we do the couple segments and, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, you guys are horse too. Horse? <laughs> yeah, they gave it up. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. I thought I was worried about some of the segments that we had, and and of course we were freestyling, but. I was like, damn, I don't know. London is so proper, even if they're not, they're going to come across that way. Yeah. You couples d- need to learn the word faithful. <laughs> no, but you, you know what's funny? <laughs> y'all, ain't, y'all ain't shit. <laughs> so, 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 and the whole threesome uh, question that we asked some of the couples, mm-hmm. uh, so people were, were making me privy to the fact that in London, <clears throat> and that's not really a thing amongst a lot of people. Threesomes? threesomes? Yeah. Yeah. What really? Like couples? No. Uh-uh. It, huh. <laughs> they need some shoes. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe they need some shoes, but that's why some of the couples looked at us like, nah, like mm. you know what I mean? Like we don't know. That's not Oh, well, they thing. they certainly fuck one on one a lot though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a lot it's a lot of a lot of one on one isolation out there. Yeah. Um but we we, we went out to experience some more of the, of the nightlife culture there. Uh so the night that we had this show, uh a friend of mine had she told me that uh you know we don't have a, a huge strip club culture mm. in the UK, but there is a quote unquote stripper party tonight. Yes, these don't happen. This is like so. I felt like we were going to witness a lunar eclipse. I was like, yeah. we can't miss, <laughs> we yeah. can't miss the nah, one the, night that the, know, blo- the, the blokes the only, are going to get blowed. Yeah, like the only <laughs> stripper party in London. Like we can't be here and not go to that, not experience that. So we went out. Uh, to the to the cabaret. I forgot the name of it. The but, cabaret. You no, know, the name of the place. Was, the name <laughs> the of the place. Cabaret was with the cabernet. Something cabaret. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went there. Why, why do they always try to like dress those up as if they're not what they are? The cabaret. It was strippers. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I can believe that that was a cabaret we went to because after after experience what we experienced yeah. definitely wasn't a strip. That club. That shit was not a strip club. It wasn't a strip club. So I automatically knew that something was different because when I walked in, I had to go back to the hotel and get my ID. I forgot yeah, my ID. Y'all you left us me. alone. No, I'm, but y'all were good. Y'all got in. So now um, you you did the old you did the old trick. Yo, I got it. It's, it's on me tonight. Yo, everyone coming with. It's on Maul. It's on me. Maul gets the door. Yo, forgot my ID. Then I'm sitting there like, well, I guess I I guess I have to pay now. There's like ten <laughs> of us. Well, I mean, it, it's also on the same card. I know. <laughs> it's whether it's your card or my card. It's the same card. Well, I didn't know. I thought maybe you were saying like it's on Mall LLC tonight. Mall LLC. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we writing that off. Not our L- like I thought maybe it was the mall. No, we writing that one off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had to go back in my ID. Came oh, no, back. No, no, Loyan charged that as fraud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we was in the club. He said, "Yo, did you sign for anything?" Else? I said, "No." He said, "Perfect." Um, well, they gave us a hard time getting in, and Rory. Had oh to yeah. Pay. How much you have to keep paying this man at the door? <laughs> I was begging them, begging them to take my money. Yeah, like but literally you know, begging. But you know what? That's why that's why Nada was kind of upset because she felt like for what we were paying for what was supposed to be the best table, they did not give us the service like we were getting the best table. Mm. So she was kind of upset <laughs> about that. Um, but I automatically knew something was wrong because when I get in, all the security keep tapping me and they keep going like this to my hat. Oh, like, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, 
what does that mean? So then one of the dudes told me like, nah, you got to turn your hat to the back. I was like, for oh, what? Oh, that's why your hat was backwards. Yeah, so I'm like, for what? <laughs> you thought he was just trying something new out? Yeah. Like, yo, he's in I London. Let me let me try something. I was like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Maul and I were next to each other and I looked over and it was like dark lighting. I was like, who Yeah, he was trying something out, you know? It was like, it was like the people could see his face better. Like, so yo, Maul's in the building. It, and that's what it was. It was, maybe the DJ will see said, me. Yo, turn your hat to the back so that we can see your face. I'm like, what? <laughs> that's so stupid. Never heard of that. But I'm like, listen, when you in Rome, you must do as the Romans do. So, okay, turn my hat to the back. I then see y'all in the corner, got the table. I'm like, okay. And then Julian approaches me. He's like, yo, so these are the singles. I'm like, <laughs> so he he's he's handing me a fistful of what looks like Monopoly money. It's pink. I'm like, what is this? So so apparently the singles in London are coins. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to throw coins Literally, at somebody. Literally, you could throw a pound at a woman. Yes. You don't, you, <laughs> yeah, you don't you want can. to throw a coin at Make a woman. They hail. Mm. Right. So they give like us that's how they used to do in like the medieval medieval times or like back and great king and just oh, like yeah. throw it at little, the, little yeah, at, the jest, at the jester <laughs> throw it at his head. So we had the fake the fake money and um I I was just like okay I'm not throwing fake money <coughs> at strippers but whatever. Mm. I was confused already because at the at the door they were saying no card because that's what I had I didn't have cash. Yeah. But they wanted to scan our ID. So I was like, you want to be on the books or off the books? Right. You're scanning my ID, right. but it's no, no cars. Cash. Yeah. Then finally we get in and then they're like, no cash. Give me your card. I said, all right, man. But that was the <laughs> Who's thing. running this show? That, that was the thing. Uh, so Nada was just like, you know, it was a little unorganized. Um, and I, I don't think she liked the way we were, you know, handled uh, because oh, we paid for the best table. They were. But whatever. We just wanted to experience the, a stripper party in London. We did. Oh, you no, you missed the traumatizing parts. You came towards the end when we started to have a little bit oh, of no, fun. Oh, no, I saw the video with the uh, the Bottle Boys. Oh, bottle my God. Boys. So, he, was... so he came over, and at that point, I was, I was annoyed. And, like, we had a good amount of people with us. And, you know, sometimes you start getting the anxiety of feeling responsible for people. Yeah. And then I had inherited your anxiety because at one point, I was just the tag along. Right. Then I became the leader. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Of something that I didn't even know about. So I was like, hey, can we just get, like, get a bottle? And then they had some other minimum. And I was like, all right, whatever it is, just please. And then he started asking what bottles. I said tequila. And he said, we only have one bottle of tequila. I was like, I, dog, just, yeah. just, oh, bring, like, just, like, just bring whatever the fuck at this point. That's like, that's like school days when they went to KFC. And she was like, white meat or dog meat? <laughs> he said, white meat. She said, we all out of white meat. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you asked yeah, me yeah. for? <laughs> No oxtails today. Well, what, yeah, I like, mean, then they take this yeah, fucking little yeah, right yeah, shit like, off yeah, in the take window. The fucking pan out the fucking water, and there's no more oxtail in it. So they come out and they're like, "We're gonna do a show for you guys." And this was like their apology to me. Okay. Because I like that point, I was clearly annoyed. Like, wait, wait, sorry, we're gonna do like a show for you guys. Like, we don't need a show. Like, just you could just bring the alcohol over. Yeah. Show us the tequila. Just please. Bro. At this point, it had been. I don't know what forty minutes, and we still we were At sober least. and wow. just annoyed. At least forty minutes. So then all of a sudden I see a bunch of blokes. I don't know what they identified as, but they look like men to me. <laughs> bunch of bu- <laughs> bunch of bus boys. They were men. A bunch of yes, a bunch of bus boys, uh-huh. guys doing bar back, started coming out with bottles of Hennessy that yeah. I didn't order. <laughs> In Classe Azul. They had like all the, you know, the the show the show yeah. bottles. Yeah. So these guys just start dancing around me. I'm like, stop, stop, you really don't need to do this. And then that's when I turn to go like on the railing of just disgusted. And then the guy comes over like, you know, like, hey, hey, look, look what we did for you. I was like, this is for you. (laughs) And then he said, we gave you the big bottle of tequila. And I was like, thank you. (laughs) So once the, once the blokes exit the area, I go over naturally to just start pouring drinks. Like, oh, we're pouring for you. I was like, I don't need another man to pour me a drink. (laughs) It's not a, if it was a girl, maybe like, all right, cool. Even though I don't even like that. I like pouring my own drinks. So I go to start pouring drinks for everyone. And then the same General manager guy comes over. He said, "No, no, 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 sir. These are fake bottles." <laughs> what? I said, "What?" They were all empty. He said, "These are fake. They're not even real bottles." I said, "So You're there kidding. was no alcohol." I in said, the "Where the fuck is the alcohol then?" Bro, and they, he's like, "Well, we're gonna bring it." I said, "We've been waiting for forty five minutes. Just bring me the alcohol. I don't need you and your mans and them to dance for me <laughs> with fake bottles. Just bring me the fucking alcohol." Yeah, they did a little number for you. <laughs> you know, as soon as the sparkers came out, that's when I started filming. So I was like, "I already know Rory's about to hit me with so, that great content." Then, <laughs> then he's like, "Well, we have to bring it in carafes because it's like illegal." And I'm like, "At this point, bro, I do not See, care. I don't like that carafe shit. Yo, I don't know what that is. That's not classe yeah. azul. They you know the classe, classe azul classe. bottle, the big one. Yeah, yeah. nigga brought you some absolute. He vodka. brought three three shots of." House tequila. It was like Jose Cuervo, bro. <laughs> yeah, there definitely ass. wasn't no class. Here. And Aaron's like, bro, I've worked it, but like, this is not a bottle. 
this isn't even a regular bottle of tequila in here. It's no. like, do you want to see the video camera footage of me pouring it? And it was like, at this point, bro, we're just going to leave. Yeah. I kind of wanted to be like, yeah, actually, show us. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I want to, at that point, I want to force your hand. Yeah, actually, take me to yeah, the back. Run the tape back. Let me see you pouring Classe Azul in this carafe. We asked right for here. pineapple juice. They brought out, they didn't even put those in the carafe. They brought them out in these boxes that we had to like tear yeah, it yeah, open. Bro, juice. it was yeah. so the alcohol was in carafes. <laughs> what should be in the carafes was in boxes. It was a fucking So mess. all in all, what we have to learn is that we should be appreciative of the star tenders. A thousand percent. Yes. I, um, I apologize for anything them. negative. Any, anything bad I've ever said about any bartenders here in America, or any dancers, week. any strip clubs, I apologize. Same. It's not until you leave home yeah. and you leave America mm -hmm. and you try to go look at some ass in another country do you realize how privileged you are. So, And, and I feel bad. You know, we've always talked about the strippers how we feel for them because the bartenders just sit there and they're doing fucking backflips on stage. The strippers in London literally did like a two-step and they were <laughs> yeah, making it, was, it rain it with fake money. Like they were just they partying was fully with dressed. each other on the Yo, stage. They didn't strip. No, no, Fam, oh, no. they had on like turtlenecks. Y'all didn't, didn't, didn't think they were going to get naked, didn't, <laughs> naked, didn't <laughs> No, but I thought like... It's not even no, no strip there was, They didn't even was, shake ass. Yeah, they, were, no, they weren't they dancing. Were, they were dancing amongst each other. They, it was like a party and we were just on the outside watching them dance. It was a bunch of girls dancing with each other. It was Instagram. Yeah, that's all it was. But we experienced it, um, and everyone made it home safe, I assume. I don't know what you gentlemen's night ended ended with or <laughs> and how it ended. I went to hang out with Better and Peach. Yes, we saw the video of you uh, you three uh, you lads in a uh, bar. Yeah. Doing Jaeger bombs. Yeah, right? doing Jaeger bombs. Drinking Jaeger bombs. Yeah, we, we got rejected. Yeah. Next to girls At least no I saw shoes. him pour the Jaeger, okay? Yeah, you did. Yeah. That counts. That being said, we yeah. got rejected by what like would, six What could you bars. fake Jaeger with, though? How, what'd you mean? It's already know. the bottom of the what fucking you mean barrel. you got rejected by six bars? We got rejected by six different bars. Why? They wouldn't let y'all in? Well, the first few were, uh, by the way, we by the time we were going to these bars, it was like 12 o'clock-ish, right? Yeah. In London, things kind of close off early. Yeah. Right? So the first few bars we needed a reservation for. For a bar. For a bar. Bro, they make you RSVP just to get into some yeah. of these bars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then the, the last one, uh, uh, oh, the fifth one, I'd say... Another reservation, but they were, oh no, they were in closing time. Yeah. That's what it was. They, they closed at two, but they wanted to close the bar early. So there was no point for us to be in there. The last one we were about to go in, it looked good. Very close to the hotel room. Uh, they were going to be 10 quid per person, right? Lit. We all paid off. There was security. Then the security guy looks at Peach. He's like, hold on one second. Lift your, lift your sweater up. And he kind of looks at his pants and then he's like, no, no, a little bit more. Oh no, higher. And then he lifts. Wanna it. see his titties? Bruh. So he just sees like the the, the band. Mm. He's like, Yeah, you can't have sweatpants on. And we did not get into that spot. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so for, wait. For sweatpants. He wanted to see Peach's waist. Maybe he was like, yeah, his waist. Six pack. He, you can't he, get in there. He really wanted to see his waist. <laughs> they to were let him know. body shaming out here. You need to have abs <laughs> to get into this bar. Yeah. You cannot get in this bar without any abs. Poor Peach was frustrated. And he's like, What the fuck? Yo, and, security yeah. guards in London are, are Dickheads. different fucking breeds. I almost got in a fight with one with Eden. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's for a little later. That was a different night. Yeah. All right, so see, you're the common denominator here. Right, it's not really me Julian's the way point. Maul tried to make it seem. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, now we got to slow down. Like, because, I, okay, well, when we left, let's, let's rewind a little bit. When we left the strip, strip, stripper party, mm -hmm. I, we went to another club. I thought that y'all were coming in. So we were going to get another Uber. I was having trouble getting an Uber. I was texting Aaron, and I was looking at the time, and I was like, yo, by the time we get all the way over there. It was going to be closed. And then yeah. okay. come, it was... Uh, Opposite of the hotel, too. At that point, we had done the show. Yeah. I had been through the stripper party extravaganza. <laughs> it was like, at this point, let me not force the night. I feel you. Let me just go to sleep. You know, we have our, our day off is the next day. I want to yeah. go see the sights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See the sights. We didn't see, I want to go see the sights. We didn't see shit. Yeah. No, because at this point, we have been recording or do a press or working the entire time. Oh, yeah. I had not seen London yet. I had yeah, seen the hotel no. and wherever the fuck we was at. That's a fact. So, I, I me, Loyan, and... uh some of the girls that was with us at the uh, strip club, stripper mm. party, we went to um, Rain was the name of the club, which we we, should, we probably should have went there first. I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but I have to ask, and you, this could be a very quick thing. Yes. Do we need to put more respect on Loyan's name? We don't need to explain why. In what sense? I just saw some things that uh, I maybe had Loyan fucked up and I need to, you know, maybe put some more respect on his name. That's all. Um, Not that I've looked at him in a different way, but... For those who don't know, Loyan is our financial manager. Oh no, we they know because we we said it on stage. Loyan, um, Loyan did and, that. Um, we 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 should be checking the books, Rory. Look at 
I uh, yeah. Loyan was having way too much fun. And you know what's so you know what's so funny about Loyan? He's only ever dresses in a button up shirt and a blazer. So when he tries to like dress regular, like he did on our London trip, he looks like an undercover cop in like every <laughs> he outfit he puts on. <laughs> he was definitely. It's so funny to see him outside of a, a shirt and blazer. Yo, he was cooking. He was definitely dressed like a narc. One oh, thousand for sure. sure. He, he definitely on, like went online on and like, dark. what are the kids wearing? And like, that's what he wore to London. But I've been told y'all to put respect on Loyan's name because I go out with Loyan and Loyan. We should definitely put some respect on. Loyan. No, we're gonna, we're gonna put respect on H&M his name and we're gonna London. check the books. Because he was, he has control of all the money. <laughs> like, so we can put respect on his name. Let me see the, uh, the the numbers from the last six months. I'm just saying, I don't think he was pitching shorty to do her taxes, no. and she was really into whatever the fuck he was saying. That's all. Yeah. I just want to know if we need to put some respect on his name. No, I want to give people credit. Respect. Listen, Where's the, listen, no, nothing. I was I was talking a, about, he was just talking to a girl at a bar. It wasn't listen, like a, I was in the box with Loyan, and I took me and Julian were talking all night. And yo. I said, "Yo, dog, Loyan is definitely, definitely a wild boy." Okay, but the way y'all explained him at the box, and then when I saw him at the stripper party, and then I saw some footage later on that <laughs> night, I, I saw like the Gemini of him, the two sides, not. Oh, the yeah. crazy, nasty shit. Y'all was talking about the box. He seemed like he was a real respectable gentleman. He was saying the right things. Yo, Looked like he wait, said some, up. he had some LOLs in wait. the corner. She was laughing. Wait, no, y'all didn't see. So when we got to the club, right? When we got to rain after we left the stripper party, Loyan and two of the girls, they jumped in another Uber, right? So we waiting outside more, for More them. points. So look, but hold <laughs> on. No, no, no. Listen, we waiting outside for them to pull up, right? It's a fucking, it's, it's not an SUV. Right, Loyan is in the back <laughs> with the two chicks, and the passenger seat is open. So when the car pulled up, I'm like, "Yo, Loyan was sitting on the door handle, like inside." I'm like, "Yo, Loyan, why you ain't just sitting in the front, bro?" He looked at me, he's like, "Yo, come on, man." I was like, <laughs> "I said, what you mean, come Yo, on?" Mo, I said, mo. "Fam, you had to sit right next to in the back seat." Mo, all right, hear me out. We've all and Loyan's been, not a small guy. Not at all. No. So for him to squeeze in the back seat was kind of... Imagine that car. All I saw was back on the window. I'm like, yo, why, why, he, why he ain't just sitting... The, this, the front seat is wide open. Nothing. A nice car. BMW. I mean, you mm-hmm. space you know. his front seat. You know what time it was. He looked at me. He's like, yo, come on, man. I said, right, yo, Picture Loyan standing in a BMW is fucking hilarious. Bro, he was sitting on the door like this. I kid you not. All I saw okay. was back when the car. All right, well, hear me up. Maul, have you ever gotten... You know, had some rhythm with a chick it's going well, but you know, if you leave her sight, it's done. Yeah. It's over. You have to make sure the rhythm keeps going. You have to stay by her side or it's a dub. Listen, I he wasn't that. even going to passenger seat. <laughs> he said, you're going to remember me. No, I, I, get, I get that, but <laughs> We're in, in the, the same, same car. car? <laughs> in the same car. In the same car. <laughs> they're not, they wasn't riding in separate cars. It was no, the I know. same car. I'm saying he's taking that to the next level. Yeah, yeah come <laughs> on, man. I get it. I get, listen, get it how you live. We went to Rain, had a good time. We probably should have went there uh, instead of going to the stripper party. Rain was nice. Mm-hmm. Nice vibe. Had a lot of space for us in the section. Um, had the, the, the girls, some girls, some of the girls that was at the stripper party with us came there. Yeah. Um, and there's some other girls that I think uh, Aaron knew uh, showed up. Okay. Good time. They even ordered us pizza because the girls was hungry. They ordered pizza for us. I'm sure it was so good. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> London's known, London knows her pizza. At, I at that hour. Papa at John's. rain. I think it was a Papa John's. Papa, yeah, honestly, mistaken. it's probably better than the ones here. And you were still recovering from eating real cheese at that point. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, no, no, no. no. Yeah. We almost canceled the London show because Maul ate real cheese. Yo, yeah. One of, them, one of them sandwiches that they said was vegan? It was not vegan. Nah, bro. So I, know, I, know, I know dairy when I feel dairy, bro. <laughs> Mall ate cheese. Yo, listen. Yo, fam. My stomach start kicking. London cheese at that. I said, nah. Right. That wasn't London that, cheese. That wasn't no vegan cheese, bro. <laughs> that was not no vegan. And why would you put dairy cheese on a vegan sandwich? Like, that don't even make sense. I'm sure that's common. Like, vegetarian people do that. I was nervous, But man. it was supposed to be a vegan spot, bro. What are you talking about? Oh, why yeah. is that cheese in the building? Yeah, why is that like, cheese why is there? That, yeah. Why is that even here? Like, why? You, why is that even? Why is that even in your stock room, sir? Like, Listen, man. That shouldn't even be here. High but, rate um, of terrorism in London. Oh my god! I, I spent that. I spent a lot of that morning on the toilet. Just it was. It was bad, bro. It was bad. But I made it through. Made it yeah. through. Everything was good. Oh, um, banana. Well, yes. Uh, Julian and I made a judgment call. <laughs> made a judgment call because we knew the time it would take over yeah. there. So y'all didn't. Y'all didn't come to rain. And we was y'all like, made a, y'all made a U turn back to the hotel. Of course, the hotel was right there. So yeah. convenient. Yeah. We had we had we had a group, a solid group of of fun people. Okay, along with uh, Loyon's camera guy. <laughs> okay, uh, who didn't hey, speak Gary. English? He was Gary. cool. No, he was very cool. What's his name? Paul. Gary. Paul. Oh, fam. It's Paul. Get it together, though. It's Paul. Paul? Did he take yes. one photo? Right, cool. 
Oh, he, he I didn't see him with a camera. <laughs> Bro, Lauren was like, yo, he's my camera guy. He's I'm my like, videographer. Does he have a camera? <laughs> Where's his equipment? He's my man. Where did you Shout get out, Gary from? <laughs> Shout out to Paul. Roma- he's from Romania, I think. Lauren, I'll say, right? right? Yeah, Romania. Shout yeah, out to he Romania, made it very Paul. very clear that he's from, he's like Andrew Tate and I are from the same area. Oh, yeah. that's, 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 that's where he dropped? Right? That's the name drop? only thing he said. Okay, cool. Uh, so shout out to that's Romania, fam. Paul. <laughs> but you know, anytime someone doesn't speak English and they're hanging out with you, you just feel like he they're spe- judging he you? He spoke English, didn't he? He spoke a little English. Oh, so maybe he just didn't speak and I just assumed. He was just very American. Yeah, you're just Irish. Well, he, I just felt like was giving judgment eyes the entire time. <laughs> well, he would kind of was with the, within reason. He Why? was judging. He saw a lot of crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> he was with us at the box. Oh yeah, he could oh, judge there. Yeah, he saw us at the hotel. Okay, definitely could judge there for sure. <laughs> All right, so tell me about this uh, hotel escapade, hotel party that you guys had. All Arthur. right, well, we get into the hotel. The bar is closed. At, okay, naturally, we had, we had just missed the bar. I believe, <laughs> I believe the bar closed at <laughs> fucking four in the morning. Of course, I thought it was. Oh, no, it was about no, two a.m. No, two. when you live in life fast, you never you know who's who's watching the. It clock. was daylight savings time <laughs> yeah, in America, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I got yeah, confused. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. An hour yeah. Four hours back in New York, I get it. Yeah, that's uh-huh. that's what I was like. It's daylight savings, yeah. like, sir. We don't do that yet. Yeah. Like, but in America, <laughs> you're not in America, sir. <laughs> I'm an American. Yeah. Do American things here. <laughs> we, so we had the bar closed. We had two bottles of wine, right? So I I ran up to my room. Yep. Okay. Grabbed some wine that I had. Okay. And you know it was an empty bar area and. We had done some BYOB situations down there when it was open before, and yeah. I felt like everyone was our friend. But this was this was after hours. <laughs> yes. Everything is closed. You yes. gentlemen should not have been in the bar area. We Correct. weren't in the bar area. We okay. just hung out like in the lounge. At the- yeah, yeah, it was like the lounge bar. Oh, right there. Before By the, the revolving bar. door when you walk in. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's the lobby. Yeah. Where, <laughs> where, where, right, we're, we're trying to dress this up. Yeah. Yes, we brought a bunch of people to the lobby and then I brought alcohol down there and we figured why not just bring... I, I should have brought a Beats pill and went crazy. Um, <laughs> you definitely would have got kicked out of that hotel. Then but the security tried. guard immediately came over and was like, you can't do this. Well, all he said is you can't drink down here because of the liquor licensing. We were like, okay, fine. So Roy put the bottles under the table. It was like, cool, we'll just hang out. Mm. We weren't allowed to hang out. And I, and I want... Everyone to be clear in starting the story. I have been working on my anger. You may, you may not see it because I do it for funny purposes here. I've been working on my anger a lot. Uh-huh. I'm a very zen person these days. Even with things that annoy me, I don't have the rage. I, was still, I think I was still suppressing some of the rage from the stripper party. <laughs> that okay. maybe was bubbling. Oh, yeah. That's fair. Okay. But I've yeah. been a very, very zen person lately. Respectful. So when the guy said that, I was like, of course. And typically, I wouldn't even get mad at that either. Mm-hmm. So we're just hanging. Like, right. I don't think we're being very loud. There's like five of us, six of us, maybe. Wasn't even that crazy. Okay. But y'all were making too much noise. And we weren't drink. literally making any noise. We were just sitting in the lobby were trying y'all to talking figure out and our y'all voices? Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, like, we weren't. None of us were belligerently drunk. We were just sitting on the furniture thinking how, about- How could I be drunk? Is. I didn't even get the alcohol I fucking paid for at the yeah. stripper party. <laughs> yeah. And okay. you couldn't drink the wine that you bought downstairs. Exactly. Okay. So what happened with security? Then the guy that does carpool karaoke came out in a fucking mustard sweater and a stupid blonde haircut. Don't talk about Arthur like that. Was that the gentleman's name? He was the no. manager. Oh, he's the manager. And said, more or less, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> now, like, how, get the fuck out the hotel say it, or get out of the lobby. Nah, but he was like sassy with it. How do you say it though? Like, give me a. Julian, t- you tell this part and I can go from there because I can't remember. I need how- I just remember going okay. And then it was that. Didn't matter to me at all that I immediately just got up and was like, all right, cool. Okay. That's why this part doesn't, it's foggy to me because I didn't care. Yeah, he Julian blacked, went he blacked out. I would, I, <laughs> I blacked out. Yeah, next thing I know, I was over him and my fist was yeah, bloody. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I don't fuck with me. <laughs> yeah. Yo. I had no, I, like, I swear everything went red. I told you not to fuck with me. See? See, this is why, this is why it's just good to just go to your room. I just want call the footage. it a fucking night, I want the man. footage from the hotel. Just call it a fucking night, man. <laughs> we should take that footage. You got to know when enough is enough, man. You got to know when enough is enough. You got to <laughs> go home. I got to go home. <laughs> Seriously, at that point, we just got up and, and went. We we were like, fuck it. All right, whatever. We'll just go to uh, Rory's room. Okay. Yeah. So we all are making our way towards the elevator. And uh, uh, Mustard Stain came over and he was like, yeah, I need to see all your keys. We were like, sorry, what? 
He was like, if you're staying here, I need to see everyone's keys before you can get in the elevator. We're like, well, why would we? That's not a thing that people do at hotels. Why would we need to do this all of a sudden? And he was like, I check it in with every single guest that stays here. I look at all of their keys before they get in the elevator. And, and then, as he's saying, I can promise well, no, you that nobody said, looked at my so key I said, the entire time I was there. I said to him, I said, I've been staying here for two nights. Not one person has asked me for my key card. And then he had a very condescending, well, then that means you haven't stayed here for two nights because I ask everyone that comes in. And at that point, that's when like, you know, a little bit of the Red Ranger was, I just like, Bro, no, don't, I just don't see, fuck with me, I man. I'm, see I, was ve- I was very calm and like minding my business. I was very polite. Like, that's my thing now with my Zen shit. I, that anger still exists, but it gets triggered when people fuck with me when I'm not fucking with them. Okay. Like when I'm minding my business, don't fuck with me because I'll take it much further than you'll ever take it. I respect that. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Heard you so as you're so. saying this, there's a couple that literally walks behind us in a different elevator, just goes in. More with than a couple. It was like five yeah, other people. Like, and, nobody, other. and he didn't a, check any key. Another group no, of people. Not a key was checked. And, no, they just walked in and went up. And Rory, Rory just checked. Because at this point, we're in the elevator. Security is standing. There's two security guards. They're both standing in the door, not letting us close the door because they're blocking the sensor and they won't let us out to talk to uh, the manager because they were afraid that we were going to beat him up. So we're <laughs> yelling and like having an argument with this guy while he can't even see us. We're yelling from inside the elevator. He's on the outside of the elevator. He's around the corner. We can't even see him, but we're going at him. And yeah, as it's happening, people are going up and, and down. You, the, one of the security guards was mad cool. He could not keep a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> he was dying laughing because his his boss was being like a complete asshole. He's a dick. So I was like, all right, so you really check every single key and I can see the security guard's face, but the manager can't see his face and he is trying not to start like dying laughing. Like, bro, we don't check everyone's no, key. They, they don't check keys. They just so, did, they didn't think that y'all had... They didn't... They knew that y'all were going upstairs with probably more than three or four of y'all. Well, I so I slipped through security... And then the guy kind of like grabs me because I wanted to get face to face with oh, the manager. Nah. At this point, I'm quiet because I know Julian is taking the reins at this you're point. Hearing, yeah. You're hearing the little Rory, red power. Rory, Rory, yeah. Rory <laughs> led, like, <laughs> led, led, <laughs> like with a lot of he out the gate, just like oh no, Rory. Listen, when was, when they don't let Rory through the TSA line, <laughs> Rory, it's I was, fucking. It's so I was like, I don't want to look. Like I a would bitch. never live this down. My Five dad years will ago have your he, ass. <laughs> I don't want to look like a bitch, Fuck. so I match his energy. <laughs> yeah, I went off. So I get all out. of this is happening, and I have no idea that this Wait, is going uh, on. Well, I just want to do a quick side note. Yeah. Five years ago in Houston, Texas. I had a TSA pre-check that they didn't let me in and they oh let Maul in. God. And I was like, but I have TSA pre-check. He and for the rest ready. of my life, I've not been able to live this down no. from Maul. Were you, like, saw, were you that you, fuming? What? I was not he mad. Was, he was 10 seconds away from my dad, I'll have your ass, Ray. <laughs> you know when the white boys get to that, my dad, will have your ass. He was about 10 you know, seconds you know from who that. I, am? I saw it. I was like, oh, he's almost over the edge. And then he kind of, <laughs> then because and the only thing that stopped it was that it literally was empty. The airport was not super packed. Oh. So we all got through around the same mm-hmm. time. But if it was like a point where he didn't get through before we did, oh, it was my dad, I have your ass. What time, was wrong with your, sure. pre- your, with your pre-check? They just didn't honor it at that. They just told him to go on a wrong line. And he was like, but I have pre-check. And the lady was acting like she didn't care about that. Oh. So, and yeah. No, which was fine. But then Maul, who didn't have pre-check, behind me goes through pre-check. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the so, lady, na- so naturally I was like, wait. That's reparations. So, so it, 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 exactly. Reparations. The lady, it, was a, it was a black TSA agent. I am a agent. white man. It was a black TSA agent. I can't be treated this she way. She probably was just like, let the brother through you, Irish lad, go over there. Like, start from scratch. <laughs> and to me, that felt like the biggest injustice in American history. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say he was, he was almost at my dad to have your ass anger. It was almost there. So, y'all finally. Well, we're, we, he was there with this incident. Oh, God. I, I already know. So, yeah. But no, I, I was, at that point, I was dead quiet. Julian had taken the reins. He was. Uh, I went off. He was starting to maybe pick apart his outfit. I called him out for wearing the same dusty sweater he had. The he looked night like before. Arthur, bro. So the night before, he was at the bar with us, all seven of us, getting drunk and hanging out. He also was very drunk. Oh, he was wasted. He was yeah. wasted. Yeah, on shift. So I, I see him, and I was like, I was like, bro, how are you gonna come at me? You're in the same exact same fucking outfit you wore yesterday to the bar and you were hanging out with us drinking with us and as soon as i said something about his outfit he got so mad and i don't know how he's to- like i hate this uniform too <laughs> Julie didn't even no 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 let me do the science for you let me do the science he he was in his own swag like he yeah, put it that was together his drip. he was the only one that wasn't in the like hotel the black get up. well he was mm-hmm. the only man and, and on top of that how do i say this politically correct he uh was of the sexual orientation that may care a bit more about fashion when when you <laughs> okay, 
when you critique their dress, especially if they've been wearing it for three days straight. I knew that shit would cut deep, so I kept laying into it. Yeah. And, and like the, the cold cuts were like seeping over the, the <laughs> Oh my God. The sweat. It was just, up. yeah, it was a lot. Pastrami. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Smell, smell a little pastrami. Yeah. I get so, it. I don't get it. How do they eventually let us up? What happened? Because I didn't, we, none of us really calm I don't, the, the I don't know either. Because I had stayed in the. <laughs> I blacked out at this point. Rory heard the they fiddle. Put me, they put me back in the elevator, and I think who we were with, like the people we were also with, were able to to talk to him and get. They were like, "You guys can't talk to me. Scared. We'll talk." So they went and talked, and then twenty minutes later, we were able to go up. So we were in that elevator for like forty minutes. Oh, so then then we then we get up. That sounds like a terrible night. No, then then we get up. Um, we get upstairs. We kick it. Whatever. It's whatever. Everybody leaves. Yes, that's exactly. He looked just like that with his stomach and everything, like Arthur. I don't even know if he had glasses, they wouldn't have been on his ears. Um, <laughs> he, the two security guards, this is after everyone leaves at this point. Uh huh. In my room with laptop. Now, I don't even have my Beats pill. Mm. Watching, watching a fucking Netflix thing. Get a knock on the door. It's the two security guards from before. Yeah. They're like, hey, can you keep the noise down? Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's whatever. Cool. I don't mind. Go back, lower my laptop. Not even five minutes later, another knock. I'm like, what the fuck could this be? There's fucking Arthur and the two security guards back in my fucking face. I'm like, yo, they already came up here. Like, I, I turned, I turned the, the shit down. Like, what's, I'm trying to go to sleep. At All the lights point, is I off. Left. Like, I'm really trying to go to sleep. He said, I need to see in your room right now. How many people do you have in there? <laughs> At this point, I, le- I left. The, I, I was there for the first security check. I left after oh, the first. One. Okay. So... I'm like, oh, there's no one in here. Like, no, you're not coming in my room. Like at this point, the lights are off. I'm trying to go to sleep. This is like harassment at this point. Please leave me the fuck alone. Like, what more do you need? He's like, there's been uh, plenty of noise complaints. I'm like, I have a laptop playing right now. I turned it down again. I'm trying to go to sleep. Trying Please to leave me the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. Then he starts getting extra sassy. And that's when I could tell he was really fucking drunk. And he's like, I need to come in the room now and see who's in here? I'm like, you're not coming in my fucking room. He's like, this is my hotel. I'm allowed to come in. I said, I don't give a fuck. You're not coming in my fucking room. Leave me alone. So I shut the door. Yeah. I will. And then he's like, I'm going to go get a key. And then the security guard knocks again. I open. I'm like, hey, what's up with your man? He comes back up in the elevator and is like, I'm coming in the room now. I said, all right, look, you want to see? Come to the door. You see anyone in this fucking room? Because the, the rooms weren't big. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I need to see in the bathroom right now. I'm like, all right, you, you're taking this way too fucking far you're not going in my bathroom. Like, this is crazy at this point. He's like, I've been getting too many noise complaints. And that's when... My dad, I have your ass. N- that's when the Red Ranger, like, literally the, formed... The fiddle started playing. The whole helmet yeah. came on and everything. <laughs> and I said, all right, let's give him a fucking noise complaint then. And I got right in his face <laughs> and started screaming really loud to the point that I backed him out of my room. Uh-huh. And I said, are you trying to fuck me? Why do you keep trying to come in my fucking room? Are you trying to fuck at this point? Like, this is fucking nuts. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying to go to sleep. Unless you're trying to give me some head, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, London. Uh, and then we had a great then time. He turned, then he turned around. And mind you, the security guard, I can still hear him laughing. And then he's like, all right, all right, all right stop, stop, stop. And then the guy runs to the little elevator. Stage. He's like, I'm calling the authorities. And I just went in my room and I went to sleep. Okay, never, cool. never heard from anyone else since then. Well, I'm, <laughs> I had no idea all that has happened. We were staying in the same I hotel. Know it was that bad. Um, a I, man coming to your room that much only has one thing on his mind. He's trying to fuck. Oh. Yeah, or, or, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean. You, he keeps coming to my fucking. All right. Yeah, it's, relax, it's, ew. <laughs> Tamara says yeah, suck ew. the red out of that shit. Yeah. Oh. Well, London, we love you. Uh, thank you oh, for the hospitality. Uh, well, then I almost got in a fight the next night with that. Oh, yeah. What did, what do y'all be doing, bro? It's the chews, bro. <laughs> we were raging off the chews. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo. It's all literally. the blood was just circulating. Bro, it didn't know I, where to go. <laughs> it's Ed and Pedro and I and two girls and we go to this bar. Just a bar. Just a local bar. And mm-hmm. the door security guy, I, I'm, I'm first. I'm leading. And the guy looks at me dead eyes and goes, you can't come in. <laughs> this like, is the hotel? This is a bar near the hotel. Okay. And I was like, why? And he's like, you're too drunk. I was like, I haven't had a single drink today. <laughs> 
was like, I could not be more sober. I was like, actually, Yo, of the, of the five of us drunk, here, I haven't had a single drink. Of the, <laughs> of the five of us here, I was the one that had not had a drink yet at that point in the yeah, night. That's true. So I just. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Set it off. And then I just went off. on. I was like, why not? Like, why not? So I just went off on this guy. <laughs> I think he really didn't want to let Julian know. Yeah. Like, we, yeah. He was like, we close it too. I was like, bro, it's fucking midnight. It's like 1230. I was like, it's bro. midnight. Well, the bar closes at 130. I was like, cool. It's midnight. I just, I was just like, I went in on it and then we ended up going in. And then he was like, you know what? I'm going to be a nice guy today. He, he was like, let yeah, us you're in. lucky. I'm going to be nice. The fuck? Like, you're fucking. It idiot. was empty well, in there. The, the people that we were with had tried to explain to Julian. Y'all experienced London a whole, whole lot different than I did. I will say, I'm usually 90% of the time when it comes to that type of shit, usually in the wrong or overreacted. This time was like legit harassment. I was really minding my business this entire fucking time and wanted to be left alone. Well, they probably felt but, like it was too many people in the lobby. Alcohol, oh, no, so no. I, I kind of understood the, the, lobby. the first, he was the a first part. Off. Yeah, he probably was a little ticked off from that and then... And then the sweater. <laughs> Yeah, then y'all started talking about his outfit outfit and all this other shit. (laughs) He was also just drunk. He was hammered. Oh, yeah. He was drunk as fuck and bored. He was drunk and bored. Um, To say the least. So this was all Saturday? And horny. This was after, yeah, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) I should have yelled, I'm not your type, sir. I'm scared to ask what y'all Sunday look like on our day off. I I have nothing against gays. You're just not my type. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, uh, my Sunday was a lot calm. I just went and had some great vegan cuisine. That's lit. Uh, I went to Brixton. I went to uh, Brixton, which is uh, to me, reminds me a lot of Harlem. Mm-hmm. Just riding through there and walking around Brixton. Uh, so I went to Brixton, got something to eat, stopped by this uh, black-owned liquor store called the Liquor Club. Shout out to the Liquor Club. Um, just to chop it up with the guys and learn all about the the liquor business over there. And they're trying to like only have only house black-owned liquors. Obviously, they they have other liquors as well as the more popular brands, but they want to focus on black-owned alcohol and liquors. So shout out to the liquor club in Brixton. I wish we had the, the rum that the gentleman gave us at the. Uh, yes, one of the. Do you remember uh, the name of it? I'm Lo- pulling it up right now. I was just about to say Los that. Alos. I believe. Yeah, Los, Los, uh, Los Alas. Olas. Las Olas. Olas. Really good rum. Yeah, really Las good rum. He really brought good. us a few bottles uh, to the show and hung out with us. He's a really cool guy. Had, I don't know if there was like some cinnamon. It, it tasted like Spice Christmas. Rum. It yeah. was fucking amazing. The rum yeah. definitely got us to that point with the uh, hotel incident. <laughs> I had a, um, I had a sip. That was a, after for sure. Not I in actually, the lobby. I actually had a sip of that because we couldn't smoke in the venue. So I had a sip yeah. of that before we went on stage. Um, it tastes it tastes good though. It's very good. It tastes yeah. really good. So shout out to them. Um, but overall, London was great. Uh, can't wait to get back. Um, next show time 2023 for sure God willing um, thank you to everybody that came out supported um, and there were a lot of celebs in town the Dave Chappelle had a show the same night we oh, did oh yeah instead of going to the stripper party we could have went to Soul House where Erica Badu was DJing with Andre 3000 but it was but a, no was, we had to go it was a madhouse outside <laughs> oh for sure I, I didn't it, think it, we it would even it was a fucking yeah. zoo outside we had drove past it you couldn't even see in the block that yeah. it was on like it was a, it was a zoo outside Anybody that had a membership to Soho House were bringing all three of their pluses. <laughs> like it just was not. It, it wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. Once once I text Jane and say, "Hey, do you mind hitting your baby mother?" and he was like, "No," I was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna go." Yeah. No, <laughs> just, just screaming. It just was. It wasn't. It wasn't because we drove past because that was an option. But then once I saw that block, I was like, "Not happening. Not fighting through all of that." Even the the footage of Erica and Andre like in the mix looked. Yeah. It, it looked like probably. The worst experience of shoulder to shoulder, you know, I've was, ever seen it was, in the Soul it was, House. It was, it was, it was that that block was it was packed. It was, a, you couldn't even see the door. But the Soul Houses out there, I went to two or three of them. Are are beautiful. I know they're all yeah. called a bunch of different shit, but yeah, they they are very nice. Uh, so yeah, shout out to London, shout out to the UK, shout out to everybody that came out show love. Uh, we will be back, God willing, in twenty twenty three. I'm going um, back with y'all this time. Y'all look like y'all had mad fun. Like, oh yeah, but without you, you got to come. Back. I didn't like that. Yeah, you got to, you got to, you got to come. You got to come to London. We got to get you to London. Um, oh yeah, no the the, the hoes, no the blokes, no the man them. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, it was one man, dude. It's one dude. He stood up. I know he was on. He had a chew. Oh yeah, <laughs> he stood up. He said, "Where's baby D?" I said, "Yo, fam." That might have been the first question during Q and A. I said, "Yo, fam, put calm down, all right, fam? I know you. You ain't got no underwear under them sweats. You can relax." Man. I was I was screening questions, so they had to tell me what they were saying beforehand. And I, everyone that asked me that, I just told them, so we didn't have to have a million people ask that question. So he told me some pump fake question, and then I was like, "All right, cool." I gave him the microphone. He gets up and does that. I was Where's like, baby right. D? I said, "Yo, fam. <laughs> I hope she's home sleeping, but you gotta relax." But um. It was a great night, though. Yeah. Overall, great night, great experience. Very humbling. Thank you so much, London. We appreciate you all for coming out. Another sold-out show. Another sold-out show. 
Oh, that's just propaganda. Yeah. That's, that's not real. It wasn't really sold out. It was I'm sure there were 100 seats available. Oh, you, you should call the venues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get a fucking life. <laughs> The line you was fucking, the block. Holy shit. What know. a fucking loser. And you guys got to stand in ovation. I saw somebody posted that. That made me happy. Yeah, no. Listen, the love that they showed, I'm telling you, that was so humbling. Um, somebody named their, their kid after me. Yo, I got this. Like on purpose. Yeah, no, I asked I'm them. Screaming. No, no, no. I had the same, I had the same reaction. Julie. I was like, oh, like you just like the name Rory. And they were like, no, no, we named him after you. I was like, oh, you heard the name Rory for the first time. From this, no, we named him after you. I and he like, looks oh, just like Rory, that, too. That, yeah, yes. that was the other creepy part. I was like, well, that kid has no future. He's fucked by name. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry about your He's son. born with the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Great night, though, overall. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm mad we left when we did because Kendrick had two nights at the, at the O2. Nando's, DC, does it better. Think so? I know London invented Nando's, and I love Nando's. Shout out to. Uh, I think it's it's because DC is is people from DC cooking it, but uh, maybe that makes <laughs> you make a good point there. Shout out to Eat of Eden in Brixton, vegan vegan spot. Uh, the food was amazing. The the ladies there were uh, was so hospitable. Um, great food. I can't wait to get back and get some more of that food. The veggie patties was insane. I need some of that cornmeal porridge the next time I get back. Uh, Julian and I had some. That was French, right? That was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Golden took us to to some French restaurant that was probably the best food that we had. I had had at least while we were out there. Great. We had a good time, man. We had a good time just walking around, chilling. You know, shout out to BBC Radio. Yes. That, One that's Extra, available. DJ Ace. Our interview is out this Sunday. This Sunday. They had to do a few edits about some of uh, some, some of, of the Rory's. comments about the royal family. Rory couldn't wait to get those jokes off over there. He was practicing. You were screaming for Pierce Morgan in the elevator, though. No, I said, where's Pierce? <laughs> no, you, you said, where's Pierce? I said, somewhere lying. That's what I said. <laughs> I was just screaming for him. You asked me, and I said he's probably somewhere lying. I'm just happy most of my royal family jokes at the actual live show bombed because I wanted them to bomb. Like they didn't catch my taxi oh, joke yes, at all. Yes, that's, that's, that's no, all that was that was say. that was a for you joke. Yeah, Rory, yeah. Rory. No, that, that Rory. one. I held that one in. Rory the got silence that off. made me feel so satisfied, <laughs> especially because I wanted to be like, "Well, that crashed and burned." Mm-hmm. But we had a great time. Oh. Rory, it, was a, it was a really, really great experience. Is that a? Yes. Never mind. How do we forget too? Chappelle was in London. We had to compete against Chappelle on the same night. <laughs> he did a few shows out uh, in London when we were there. Um, of course, we didn't get to catch him, but yeah, his he, show was the same night as ours, I believe, right? Yeah. Did he have? Did he have more than one show? I think he had one he the too. night before, um, but I'm not positive. But either way, he's doing SNL, so we'll still get to see him at least on TV. I mean, unless you got the NBC plug. <laughs> no, I don't have the NBC <laughs> plug. Uh, shout out to Dave Chappelle, uh, hosting. SNL once again. This is his third time hosting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he's bringing Black Star with him as the musical guest, which he's had Tribe and what was the other musical guest last time? Um, Tribe was right when Fife had died. I can't remember. Uh, because he's always gonna bring his musical guests. Yeah. Type of shit is his friends. Mm. Um. Well, I'm really excited. I think that's also great to see Black Star on SNL. Like, I got that fire. That's amazing and. I love their album, No Fear of Time. Of course, they, they put it through a separate paywall, so it wasn't on DSP. So I, of course, didn't get the attention it deserved, but mm-hmm. that album is is phenomenal. So I can't wait to see them perform it. Um, it was the Foo Fighters. Uh, never mind. I take it back. He's only done it twice. <laughs> Black Star and Tribe. You did not handpick <laughs> them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe Dave's a big Foo Fighters fan. Maybe. He's a, he's I like a few guy. tunes from, from the Foo Fighters. A legendary group. Um, but what do we think? What do we think Dave's going to do with this one? Um, well, you know, with everything that's going on right now, uh, socially and, you know, I think that he's definitely going to, cause he is Dave Chappelle. That's what he does. He goes off of things that are currently going on and finds ways to address the seriousness in it. And also find that little silver lining of laughter and humor and a lot of the shit that we deal with, uh, on a day to day basis socially in, in America. So that's why he's a genius. He's a comedic genius because, um, he takes real life situations and, you know, gives it to us in a way where it's like, okay, humanizes us. And it's like, all right, what are we really upset about right now? Are you uh, you going to watch live or is this a uh, wake up and watch the clips type of situation? Uh, or do you want to go watch it with a zillion banks again? Um, I might watch mm. this one live. Okay. I might watch this one live. I'm just going to duck what I said. All right, cool. Dude, do you yeah. think do you think <laughs> he's not going to address a, anything I said? The, right. the smoke's off him, you know, with everyone with his, the he was a, at the in the hot seat during all the transphobic comments. And now obviously a lot has happened since and he's kind yeah. of in the clear. Mm. Do you think he'll even address, it's even worth 
bringing that. I mean, he kind of did his part on that. Like double down. Oh, well, I mean, I don't want him to come out there. With and the be transphobic like, comments. I meant it. Yeah, but like, no, nah, I, I don't. I think I think that. he did what he had to do with that. I, I, I mean, I think he kind of just made people look stupid that whoever felt like he was transphobic. And he has I mean. the Jewish comedy writers behind him, so he'll be yeah. all right. Neil, he'll be fine. Neil's got his pen. Yeah, <laughs> Neil is not Jewish though. Oh shit. <laughs> Neil, Neil is Irish. <laughs> But either way, <laughs> that's he said that like that was Neil. Bre- like, yeah. yeah, Neil Brennan sounds like a very Jewish name. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but he Dave Chappelle is hosting SNL once again, third time. Uh, that's more than anyone, right? I don't think anyone, but definitely of the big acts. Okay, well, the acts that matter to us. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting black comics? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly yes. what I'm suggesting. Where black no, I comics. I feel like Chris Rock has done it. More than three times. So no? Alec Baldwin holds the record for the most time hosting. I'm gonna okay, stay. I'm said, gonna stay away from that one. Said oh. Black. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The most that part. Black. Oh. Well, he, he named his his daughter Ireland. So <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> it all comes full circle. Neil <laughs> Ireland, Alec Baldwin. There you go. There you go. Keep See? it in the family. <laughs> uh, you're a big Steve Martin fan. Come on. I love Steve Martin. I do too. Love Steve Martin. Tom Hanks has hosted ten times. God, I love Tom all Hanks. white people. So I said black. They don't even. They're not even on the list. What what is what is <laughs> what is the rock? Justin Timberlake's kind what of the rock. rock? Samoan. He's, he's, yeah. he's oh, okay. I was he gives me racially <laughs> ambiguous. I didn't know he was fully Samoan. What? <laughs> what? So Scarlett Johansson is black. She might be paler than me. Sick. And that's saying something. All right. Oh, Justin Timberlake, he's black. That's what I said. See? I'm okay. not being a part of any of these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. Chevy Chase is black too, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Uh, either way, we'll, it's a great be tuning in. In we'll be tuning in uh, this weekend to watch Dave Chappelle as he hosts SNL once again. Mm. Uh, well, so- Drake, Drake and uh, Twenty One kept on their uh, their press run, mm-hmm. their fake press run. At that, first of all, they, that was they did genius. like. Oh, I think it's incredible that that the fake interviews, the uh, the deep fake interviews that they did, uh, super super genius. The uh, tiny desk was super genius. I thought the colors version that they did, and then they did that was an SNL one, right? Yeah. Yeah, felt like an SNL. SNL performance. Uh, and who who introduced them again? Michael B. Jordan introduced them. Okay, that would have been wild if Chappelle, it was Chappelle, Drake, and Twenty One Savage. But that would that's crazy because then you'd have Drake and Chappelle in the same sketches. Yeah, and I think Twenty One is actually hilarious and would be great no, in SNL sketches. <laughs> I mean, t- Twenty One would just have to stand there and just say "pussy" the whole time, <laughs> and that's that's good enough. You would kill that. Pussy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just the way he was on the intro to her loss of just Drake asking him to do weird things. Do like, right, like, that's a good friend, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, uh-huh. to do? As, as we were saying in the show, it's like Drake was the drunk friend leading the night and 21 was just in the past. She's like, all right, bro. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you want to do. I guess this is what we on tonight. Uh, yeah. We go on the next spot. All right, man. <laughs> Speaking of Drake and 21, they dropped their album while we were in London. Uh, so we got a chance to listen to it while we were uh, moving around London yes. in, and, uh, in, the, in the green room. And 21's uh, home city. And 21's homeland. Uh, and, and Drake's sort of. He he visits London a lot. Mm-hmm. They know him out there. I think they do. Uh, I, w- I will say behind behind the scenes, I am going to snitch a little bit. A lot of dudes in London feel a way about that Toronto slang. Y'all be buddy buddy in in the public. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, we're so much alike. There were so many dudes in London like, yeah, they just stole our whole shit. That was true. <laughs> I don't. I'm listen. I'm an American. I'm just over here. I have no idea. I like just saying man's them. I don't care who started it. <laughs> People, yeah, it's, it's a lot of uh, well, it's a lot of uh, you know. Well, it's all yeah, Caribbean it's all, culture. It's all West Indian at the West end of the Indian, day. Yeah. Um, but um, the, the the Drake Twenty One album, her loss. Uh, we had a, we had a few days to live with it. Um, it's projected to do three hundred and ninety k first week, which is absolutely yeah, that's crazy, insane. Uh, how do we feel about it? Internet's gonna hate hate it. I think it's a great album. <laughs> I think it has a shit ton of replay value. I think it's the perfect car album. Uh, of course, there's one or two skips like Broke Boys, which is for women's captions. But I think this. Yeah. I think this is an incredible album. I, I, I really this... do. I like. I like the way Drake is rapping, rapping. I like. Even if I disagree with how he shot at certain people, I like that Drake is taking shots at everyone. I think Twenty One filled in the gaps perfectly. I thought the production was great. I even like some of the weird parts where it shouldn't be singing, and it is. I, I love this album. The sequencing is great. The sequencing is great. The production is great. Of course, you know the the lyrics are great. If Drake is on, he's rapping. He's rapping his ass off. Twenty one even got off. You know, we talked about twenty one earlier this year and on the, the run that he's having with uh, his verses and features. Um, I was kind of, you know, when we first got the news that this album was happening, it, it kind of like 
came out of nowhere. I don't think any of us was expecting this, even mm-hmm. though they do have a, a history of having really good songs together. Mm-hmm. We didn't think a full project was coming. So I was kind of like nervous to know what it's, you know, hear what it was going to sound like, what it was going to feel like, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, after living with it for about a week, this album is really good. Um, I think some of Drake's uh, better songs in the last few years are on this album. I agree with you. Um, I think that uh, this album, it's, it, it's, I didn't think I would say this when I first heard it was coming. This album might be better than What a Time to Be Alive. I was going to ask you, it's, it's- hasn't been too long, but I came on here and I said, I think this is going to be better. At least personally, this, this, I think it'll be better for this my might ears. Be, not, this might be a better album, It's man. not I'm even not, close, man. Come on. I'm not. I'm, listen, this shit I'm is so you. much better I'm, than what it's I'm, on to be alive. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. I'm There's not, a much more longevity. There's not a house. single, yeah. I want really big rings in my really big wing this, or someone the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's this. He's rapping on this shit. No, he's, he, listen, he was getting this shit in the middle of the ocean. That's the one. Hey. Oh, man. Uh, I guess it's fuck me. It's a good mix. Of, uh, of car records, club records. Ron, we love you, but back outside boys is records. hard. Um, yeah, no, that record is Ma, we, are you my treacherous little twin? Uh, I can be. Okay. Not nah, kitty yeah. cat guy. Huh? I'll spin about you. <laughs> I'll spin about you, baby. You don't have to spin Hold on, hold on, on. It might have been a different, it was time difference at the time, but I think you might have texted me a screenshot of a certain song, a did. certain verse right at midnight. I did. Which one was it? It was... Um, Which spoke to you, Baby D? In, hours, hours in Silence. He, that record is hard. The end of Hours in Silence, I, I just knew me and Rory could relate to that shit. I that record well, is hold hard. on. Before I agree, can we pull up the lyrics? <clears throat> I'll read it this to you. Album, and I want to know why Angel you think I... <laughs> See, now, after, you don't want to know why I think that. After getting this album now, I really, really want this YOLO album with uh, him and Ross, up. man. That's not the part I screenshot. Go up. Go up. You were lost until you found. Oh, you, you were, were lost, lost until, until me. me. I, didn't I didn't get, get no, no fi- finder's fee. Oh, okay. You're acting like a bride to be okay. behind closed doors. Wait, is that an engagement joke? Me. Yeah. Friends are all advising. Wait, is that why you sent it to me, asshole? S- no. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Saying exactly I could die. No, now I'm looking at this differently. You up. There's three sides to this story, girl. The one you subtweet. Oh, the one that. your group chat gets to read. The <laughs> one you come and tell to me. I understand it. Finally, I'm that's trying to give you highs, and you're planning our goodbyes, but yet I turn you up. I mean, we've been there. Come on, I feel now. like that that was a remix of uh, Say What's Real when he said, I see <laughs> my ex-girl chilling with my next girl yeah. chilling with the Drake has said of this version of these of those lines in a thousand different ways. Oh, no, Drake is the king at recutting. He know how to re-rock. Oh, yeah, he re-rocked that dope and, and, and get sell it back to he us. Said, he said, you don't he work, but you everything. act retired. Yeah, you don't work, but you act retired. Soft life. This Listen, is what y'all want. I'm gonna be honest. It's I've, my fault for once I take accountability. I've never felt like a woman was lost until me. <laughs> I'm gonna just be honest. I've never. And by th- the way, I never thought I found a girl. Yeah, no, I never <laughs> felt like a woman was lost until me. I'm IG just, found her way before me. Yeah, no, that, that I have never experienced that. Um, and you but didn't. This is you one didn't of the better the songs on You didn't feel that accountability. Nah, I, it's my fault for once I take accountability. That's someone that never takes accountability. Says yo, yo, I finally take accountability. I finally that's what take you accountability. Do? Yeah, yeah, it's manipulation. Trying to Mars. turn you up. Why do I keep trying? My friend said I'm gonna end up fucking dying trying to turn you up. Trying to make you better. Trying to, mm-hmm. trying to make you that mm. person. My Damn. friend, I'm draining. I'm about mm-hmm. to fucking jump off a bridge mm-hmm. because I'm trying to turn you up. What's you his in name? the penthouse? You got new fucking attire. Get you ain't working, off. but mm. you acting like you retired. Get your shit off, yeah. baby. D. Nah. Get your shit off, baby. What's his name? Call him out. Call him. Yeah. FaceTime him. Yeah. Let him see that hair do. That shit <laughs> laid. That motherfucker laid Anytime down. Anytime the girl brings the red hey, out. Baby, do you you hear know me? it's a breakup. Them baby, just hairs is, them baby hairs is laid the fuck down, baby. Do you FaceTime that nigga right now? He pulling up. I'm letting you know. First thing he's seen in the FaceTime. Oh, you got the red hair? Yeah. You know what's going on. I've had red hair for three months. You know, that's her alter ego right there. That's when she's the phoenix. Um, <laughs> Rising from the ashes. Absolutely. Rising from the relationship. Um, yeah, no, this album is really, really good, though, man. Really, really good. Did uh, you feel the hibachi bar was specific about you? Maybe he was watching the podcast when we were talking about He did about have your, a line about birthday. sprinters, too. He said, that's whack. There was he a lot of shooting at Mall. Oh, yeah. He said, you're uh, putting bitches on a party bus. Yeah. I've never. <laughs> I've never put a bitch on a party bus. <laughs> never in my life. I've never rented a party bus for a girl on her birthday. Mm-hmm. I've never taken a girl to hibachi for her birthday. Can Even we do both of those hilarious. things for my birthday in Atlanta? You want to do that? Can sure. We rent a party bus and go to hibachi. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm with it. I can pull up at hibachi. Um, yeah, he Drake was talking big shit on this whole project. I don't know who pissed him off, who he's mad at, but some, he's mad at somebody. Obviously, the Drake with him and Kanye's. I mean, the beef with him and Kanye's back on. I mean, the, the pissed off Drake is better. You could call it sassy. You could call it unrelatable. What unrelatable, have to be but pissed off about CLB. I felt like he wasn't pissed off and uninspired. But but let's talk. This about feels that. like he's inspired. 
I don't know if it took 21 Savage. I don't know if like sometimes you feel better when you're with the crew. The homie. Like, <laughs> like even if, even if that's what it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is Drake pissed off about? What does he have to be pissed off about? I hate you. <laughs> the, the, the dude in the mustard sweater trying to tell him he can't go up to his. Oh. Yeah, who's his mustard sweater? And it guy? wasn't a double tree because he shames those. I just don't. It's just funny whenever you hear Drake is mad. It's like, what do you have to be mad about, sir? Well, you know, rich people just have to like make up find things to be mad at. Yeah, Drake was. You mad watched at, Mad Men in Succession. Drake was mad. Y'all are mad. Uh, Why y'all mad? The, Drake was mad that the airport in the Hamptons didn't have the stairs to fit his 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 jumbo jet. Well, that's because Kanye said he wants to abolish uh, steps. Yeah. Mm. That's why he's beefing with Kanye again. <laughs> the funniest bar in this entire project is one I didn't see anyone talking about. Anytime you mention me as a hot topic, like where you take your girl shopping. <laughs> Who takes their girl Who shopping? Who takes their girl topic? shopping a hot topic? <laughs> that had to be about someone that's specific. A, that's what I'm saying. Drake just over here just throwing shots. Was that an Uzi shot? <laughs> Playboy Cardi nah, dresses like they Uzi, go to Hot Topic. Uzi has not been in Hot Topic. <laughs> Uzi is Uzi has been seen laying on the floor in Chanel in the Chanel store. He is not shopping in Hot Topic. On, on Diplomatic Immunity, he references Hot Topic again. He said Hot Topic like your everyday clothes. So he has beef with someone at Hot Topic. He has for sure. Hot Topic. Someone, someone <laughs> sold him the wrong shirt at Hot Topic once. And he just I never think he's mad that it. Hot Topic is has some of his image, images on their shirts in there, and he doesn't uh, he, he doesn't get paid for that. I guess I don't mm. know. Mm. But either way, this album is really dope. I like it a lot. Like I said, I feel like it's better than What a Time to Be, and I like What a Time to Be a lot. But I feel like this is a better project, and I, I, I especially like it because I it caught a, caught me by so I didn't think that this was happening. I didn't know that this was a thing until they announced it. Um, but I'm I'm happy they did it, and uh, this has to be up there for album of the year. I get I'm guessing, and I'm I'm over the uh, the shaming bars. That, shaming? That, yeah, because we we've, we've talked about for a long time, Drake. Shames hotels that are nice, uh, certain cars, certain things. It's like oh, that's a nice. Don't don't shame the DoubleTree or the, <laughs> the Continental. Like it's a solid hotel. At this point, like I'm still gonna eat. Man, listen, you niggas go broke trying to trying to uh, think whatever Drake says whack if y'all want. This motherfucker is richer than rich. I love Hibachi. I will be there. Drake said he got to he got to stop going Van Cleef the first week. Motherfucker is rich. <laughs> First week, you're just taking these hoes to Van Cleef. Ooh, my hoes ain't cheating on you, Drake. I mean, listen, as as they someone are. that's, and they're gonna say I'm just finding ways to compliment at this point. But somebody that's this rich and this accomplished, I expect CLB out of them because, like, what else is there to do? Yeah, this is an inspired rich has no idea what's really going on in the world because he's so rich and accomplished, made an album that I think is They just incredible. wanted to have fun and talk shit on this yeah. whole project. And that's exactly what they did, which is why I like it. They're just talking shit, having fun, talking about what they're doing. It's just like their just diary of the year, everything they've done. Would you talk to my pussy ex for me? Oh, your pussy? Uh, I, I I can't call your ex pussy. That's what but. I... <laughs> I we thought do. to start the album out that way, like what... Maybe he was just checking to like see if 21 was really his bestie. Because yeah. that's a really crazy thing to ask of your best friend, your male best friend. Talk to your Yo, pussy can, ex. Can you talk to my pussy ex for me? <laughs> and Calling what, your ex and girl by the pussy way, is crazy. Friend check, 21 was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I'll talk to her. I, I'll talk to your ops while I'm at it. <laughs> 21, 21 has some balls on this album. And I, I had I to look 21. at the fucking... Look at the speaker like, yo, I knew 21 was on a run and he was rapping his ass, but he was really getting some shit off on this project. He was say he was talking real yeah. slick, man. And I don't know if that was just, you know, he he hearing what Drake saying and he I mean, obviously that's how it goes, still sharp and still, but they they had a lot of fun. You could tell they had a lot of fun making this album. That timestamp um, record that everyone thought was Drake that ended up just I being loved 21. I love the fact that he gave he got his shit off. Twenty one a time the timestamp time record because we obviously know that's what Drake is is notorious for. All right. Can I ask y'all a question hypothetically? <laughs> hypothetically. Let's folks. say Drake and Cole did an album together. Let's just, mm. let's just say that. Mm-hmm. I think 21 is a, a great rapper. But I think he even he would say he's not the rapper rapper the way that maybe a Cole is. Is Drake ever giving a timestamp record to a Cole? Fuck no. Or no. a Kendrick? Fuck no. Is no. it convenient who... And I, again, this is not me copping a plea. I've said plenty of times, I think, when 21 gets around the rappers, he raps really well. He's one of my favorite new rappers in this you know, non-rapping part of the genre. Is he giving that to somebody else? No. No. You mean like a better rapper? Yeah. And <clears throat> no. what does that say? If you're gonna give it away, we're give it away to like give a, it away to somebody that we're not getting like a two AM. That in that could that's gonna compete the same way in that regard. <laughs> Cause I listen, I love what Twenty One did on this. Now he got his shit off. 
But is he giving that to a Cole? No. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Why not? Drake never even entering an arena with a Cole on a song where they both have to rap. Rap, rap. Jodeci. In this era. Shit, they was rapping. rapping. Yeah. In this era currently right now, Drake's not doing that. Jodeci is old. (laughs) I don't think that Drake and Cole are You don't think Drake could keep up with Cole right now? I don't think, but I, this was. Do we ready hear to, Cole's features? Like, but, the, but this is what I was ready to say, though, Rory. I'm, I'm seeing that a lot online. A lot of people still feel like, for whatever reason, that Drake don't really want to rap with the rappers, and I don't understand that because I'm like, I mean, Drake raps like he raps at a high level. I mean, it's, it may not be as lyrical as miracle as you know some people would want it to be, but if you listen to this album, he's rapping. Oh, no, I, I don't think no, those people, I think those are two separate points. I think people are saying, yes, Drake is rapping, rapping on this. No one can, well, some people can deny it because the internet, but we're not denying that. When was the last time he rapped with the rappers? Been a while. And he raps with a lot of people. Yeah. It's, Drake's not one of those people that just stays to himself, raps on a lot of shit. And I know he has different, you know, purposes, if that's, that's even a word. Yeah, there's different reasons why. That why he, he would get up, hop on certain songs or do records with certain younger artists. Very calculated. Like, but it's been a while since he's... I mean, we know he did the Benny shit, but it didn't come out. Mm-hmm. Who is he rapped with? Well, I mean... I could be wrong. I, it, I'm just trying to run my memory. And when he raps with C, the rappers, like On CLB, doesn't... Hove was on a... Drake was singing. Yeah. Um, if we could pull it up, maybe... I could be wrong. I'm really just posing a question. On what, CLB? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jack is a, I'm sorry. Jack is a rapper. Oh my god. Rapper. Yeah, Rory. I, apo- I apologize, everyone. White on white erasure. <laughs> oh god, that's why I got banned. Churchill Downs could have been a top stamp record if they just said like 4:45 at Churchill. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah, never, but I think the the, the premise. But he's of never a, done a a, a feature. Yeah, time that's stamp. the premise of the timestamp. Yeah. It's just one person gets their shit off. Yeah, I get it. But I'm just saying that's the it's, it's no hook. It's just bar. It's just a loop, a beat on a loop. Oh wait, no, he's rapping Wayne. I'm sorry. He's rapped rapping Wayne. BB King freestyle. He was rapping rapping oh, with yeah. Wayne. Um, the shit with Nicki. He was rapping with two rappers. That's his camp. Listen, Drake, Drake can't just rap. But, but with Wayne, but Wayne like, got off every time they've rapped. Like he's, Wayne is rapping, rapping, and Drake, Drake is, keeps up with him. Drake is way too calculated, and he knows that it's a, the biggest of looks for the other rapper if he just starts rapping with whoever raps, quote unquote. But I say that to say uh Drake is a rapper. He's one of the elite rappers. He can rap. I don't I don't know why at this point in his career people still feel like he can't rap or he can't rap with these type of rappers. Mm-hmm. That's stupid to me. Drake can rap with any put anybody on the beat with Drake. Drake is gonna shine. He's gonna get his shit off. His verse is gonna be hard. Is it gonna be better than but you know it's subjective? Who do you like? You like J. Cole? Okay, cool. Go with Cole. I like Cole too. And I'm just saying, we ain't gonna walk away from it feeling like Drake's verse was whack, is what I'm saying. Like I don't I don't think that's that's gonna uh gonna happen no matter who he gets on the track with. But overall, her loss. Dope project, dope yes. album. I'm happy we got it. Wasn't expecting it. Came out of left field for me. I didn't had no idea it was happening. Replay value in an era that doesn't have much. That's I think the most Super important dope record. part Super of this album. album has replay value. I feel like I want to throw this back on. Yeah, no, it has a lot of replay value, a lot of shit talking, a lot of slick talking, great production. Uh, a lot of asses will be shaken. Um, a lot of captions will be capped. Oh, I can't wait. Um, Harmonizing about the major labels is hilarious to me too. <laughs> All you hoes, all you hoes. <laughs> they do need to know talk to, to the Slaughter Gang CEO. <laughs> that was pretty good, Maul. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. He sang back up for Luther. When, when, me, when me and Drake album come out, what y'all gonna do? Y'all think I'm still coming to hip hop? <laughs> I got me fucked up. Damn. Damn. You just gonna break off and yeah, oh, man, go with Drake? That, man. They say them just change you know how I spin about you, Rory. Oh, spin about spin you, about you. <laughs> yo! Why did that feel like a pause? That's it is. definitely a pause. <laughs> well, yeah. yes. Uh, if you haven't heard this album, go get it. Yeah, if you well, we're, we're, uh, if you've been in a coma for a week, yeah. Twenty One Drake will do y'all a favor. Please go purchase. Do y'all a favor. <laughs> download, stream her loss now. Uh, even though they're projected to sell four million records <laughs> the first the, week. Um, of all the fake rollouts that they were able to pull off, it seems like Vogue is the only one uh, taking action against them. Um, suing them for four million dollars for their uh, fake cover. Vogue well, he's he's had a lot of Vogue bars. He even had he had to clean up one of his Vogue bars on this album. What is Vogue suing for four million dollars for? Like 
Using it's their t- likeness. Attention. Good. Using he's using their likeness. Yes. That, Can you pull up be, the Vogue? They shit. should be honored that Drake is using their likeness. Like it's the, one of the biggest but, artists in the world. But you know I mean, that Vogue that, that were on that Let's fashion relax. like they yeah, look Vogue down is on Vogue, this type But of I'm just saying this is this is not this is one of the biggest artists of his generation. Like Can I see the magazine cover? Oh, or like the, what it was? Does it use their logo? No, nah, well yeah, it has their uh, you know, classic print at the top. But it says Vogue. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Well, they may have a case, but that's corny to me. Like, yeah, I think it's corny too. And I don't think Vogue needs four million. They suing them for that. Yeah, like, come on. Like this, like, just come on, man. Let's let the artists have fun. Let we we saw what the rollout was. The it's, quote is hilarious. But you have to be political. <laughs> Twenty one Savage. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be political. If I'm Vogue, I'm pr- I'm praising this. this Man, I, I really this hope it's fun. If I'm the- Vogue, I'm printing limited copies of this and yeah. selling it. Like that's a good, this is an amazing fun. Yeah, because at that point, can Drake and Twenty One sue Vogue if they did that? Probably not, right? No, they could. They, but they could. Yeah, Drake's of Jewish. You can't sue Drake. I would really like to see the two of them do <laughs> SNL. Not for the. I mean, of course, do the music shit, but. The two of them doing sketches on SNL and hosting, I think, would be hilarious. 21 Savage is funny without trying mm-hmm. to be. Drake has killed every time he's done SNL. I know 21 would shine in that shit. <laughs> he would be so fucking funny the on that show. The best piece of it's content. Probably, it's probably happening. The it's best probably piece coming. of content from 21 is when they send that Vice nerd reporter to his hood. And 21 took him around. You know. The one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like yeah. two days in the hood with, with 21. Yeah, it was the yeah. funniest that was where the It's a Knife came from that. Yeah. Like, there's so many great <laughs> moments came from that. So they moved the Drake show at the Apollo, which was supposed to be on Friday um, because of Takeoff's funeral in Atlanta and moved it to December. Two shows. Do we think these will be Drake 21 or one Drake and then the other show, Drake 21? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he's, he, would br- he will bring out 21 for uh, to perform some of the songs. Yeah. But not like a full album not a full uh her loss concert mm. um because i do think drake is you know he is the obviously the the, the it's his show mm. but i do think they take those dates to uh give us some of the album but this is obviously they're gonna go on tour drake already alluded to it um so this will probably be like a little sample but i do think that drake will focus on maybe some of his b-sides maybe That's, some of his early stuff with this apollo these apollo shows i think Using this Apollo show should be the blueprint for him in 21's tour. Like, of course they can do arenas. We know that. Oh, yeah. But it would be cool for them to do like Terminal 5 size venues or maybe Small even joints. smaller shit. And yeah. like do two, three nights. Both of them don't need the money. Right. Like just to do some cool shit in, in certain markets. You think he's giving them the same set list for these two shows or is he switching it up? I think he'll switch it up. That's what I think too. I, I definitely do. But I mean, you went to his private party in New York for the release that he Mention anything of this? Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't. Oh, Wait, okay. we were, I think we were in London. No, oh. you flew back and then. And then you, yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were like, "Yo, I gotta go after the show." Because <laughs> with the time difference, he was able to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got like, right and I'm jet. saving an hour. I got yeah. right on the jet and just came back and then came back to London just to do the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's exactly what. Did, I did. you let a girl uh, use your name on the list since you weren't there? Yeah, like, yo, yo, just go like, go and tell them more. Tell them so malls out of town. It's all good. Tell them I spin about you. It's all good. Did I ever tell y'all about the time I did that with Rory and like couldn't get in? Where was this at? Because no, you're not white and Irish. <laughs> She's a redhead though, so she thought that she is was exactly yeah. the hottie party. The hottie party, party. which Look was who the hottie party. throwing at wow. the door at the hottie party. I mean, I'm with Rory. The hottie party. Rory was like, Rory literally. Was <laughs> I see like, nothing wrong with going to a hottie party. <laughs> Rory was like, I'm gonna go, and what then I the got there. Um, Megan's party back when she was throwing the hottie parties in like New York and L. A. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Meg the Stallion? Rory was like, I'm going to meet you down there. And then didn't meet me down there. He's like, just use my name. I said, Rory Farrell. They said, who? I said, you know what? Oh, okay. I'm just going to go to fuck Damn, home. Damn, kid. The hotties don't even know you. Might have been Jack you see what at the door. You see what happened? Look, Looking the hotties. And I was Jack so was running the door. Everybody who's anybody was there. I was so fucking Not Which venue was it at? I heard Doja's titties. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, it was at the, some, it was like a Chinese restaurant kind of thing. I don't even remember this. Downtown. Town? No, it wasn't how I can't remember. It was like a small, small, like low key venue. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have sent you there if I wasn't confident. So no, you sent her there. I don't know. All you hoes, <laughs> yeah, all of you hoes. You talking to the slaughter gang CEO? They don't know you at the door, so you gotta go. That's true. They don't know me. 
Um, Justin Bieber will be performing at Takeoff's funeral services this weekend in Atlanta, Friday at the State Farm Arena. I would love to know the set list. Well, they um, have a record together from oh, okay. Migos, the Culture Three. Yeah. Um, we're in Atlanta this weekend as well for our show Sunday. Right, Sunday, right? The show Sunday, yes, the Sunday. Sunday at the what's the name of the center clean stage? This up. Center stage. I'm we're sorry. Cleaner, we're in Atlanta this Sunday at Center Stage. Uh. Sunday at Center Stage. Yes. My birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Julian. Um, and Takeoff's funeral is Friday. Um, again, rest in peace to take off prayers and condolences. Continue prayers and condolences to his friends and family. Um, still can't believe that. Still can't believe we lost Takeoff like mm-hmm. that, man. That's beyond tragedy. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, it's a it's a beautiful home going service. Uh, I'm pretty sure there will be other people performing. Mm. As well as Justin Bieber, I think that Justin Bieber is probably the one that they probably got clearance to announce first. Um, but yeah, it's just a sad time, but hopefully it's a beautiful homegoing service, a beautiful celebration of life, a beautiful celebration of a talented, bright star, bright young star in our culture. Um, but most importantly, hopefully it's a uh, it's a lesson and um, a lesson of us, you know, loving each other and supporting each other and not being so aggressive with each other in our culture, which is something that we seem to be doing way too often. Uh, Every other month, every few weeks, it seems like we're losing somebody due to just a violent, violent energy that is uh, hovering over our culture. And, uh, you know, this culture has always been violent. It's always been, you know, violence in our culture, but it seems to be just just a little more uh, senseless and uh, just, you know, it's just too, it's just too many, too many lives we're losing. We just... PNB Rock, not even two, three months ago, you know, back here with Takeoff now. And it's just a sad, sad, sad state of affairs and sad time for us. But um, let's celebrate life. Let's celebrate love. Let's celebrate unity. And yes. um, let's have fun. Celebrate a legend's life. Celebrate a legend's life. Absolutely. A absolute legend in our culture at only 28 years old. It seems like it was a story before we left. And now that we're back from London, it's still a story to Kyrie Irving, uh, NBA uh, superstar know, Yeah Superstar <laughs> Kyrie Irving um, So Kyrie Irving Was given a list of Chores Homework He was given homework he uh, had to do Before being able to Return to basketball <clears throat> Excuse me And um, when we saw the list And it came out I immediately said I said okay This is Either they are doing this Because they know He's not going to do this And they don't want him To play in the NBA anymore Or They're trying to uh, Force him into doing this Because he still really Wants to play Yeah And he will do this Uh so now some time has passed. Uh, he had a meeting with uh, Commissioner Silver, I think yesterday or the day before, mm-hmm. hearing that the uh, the meeting went well, it was productive. Um, I don't know where they stand on the list of things and the demands that they had for him. He was asked to apologize and condemn the film he promoted. Um, he, had, he was told to make a $500,000 donation to anti-hate causes. He had to complete sensitivity training, complete anti-Semitism training. Meet with the ADL and Jewish leaders. Meet with team owner Joe Sy to demonstrate an understanding of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Jalen Brown, who was the vice president of the National Basketball Players Association, he said that the union has issues with the requirements outlined for Kyrie's uh, reinstatement, and I think that they were going to appeal those uh, those uh, guidelines that the uh, NBA had put into play. So this is obviously something that is going to uh, Go on for, I guess, the foreseeable future. Um, but he can't play until anything's resolved, right? Right. He has to, uh, whatever, both sides have to agree on, you know, if he's done enough, if he's apologized to their liking, so on and so forth. I just think that it's unfortunate because, um, you know, while we've seen Kyrie and the things that he's done over the years with his charity work, uh, he donated money to the WNBA players, Um you know, he's done countless things in the community in New Jersey. Uh, very specific donations. Very. I, li- I like that type of stuff when when rich people, instead of just like, hey, here's a bunch of money yeah, no. as a tax writer, if like he finds specific things that he's passionate about that he knows need the money may get overlooked when it comes to charity. Again, I don't like to use that word, but, yeah. you know, right. giving donations yeah. uh, to, Help to organizations out. that that need it. So. He's been, in my opinion, one of the best Ky- examples Irving of an NBA not, player donating. He's, he's not a hateful person. He's not a racist. He's not any of these things that the media is trying to portray him as. 
uh, did he repost something, a documentary that may have had some hurtful uh, rhetoric and hurtful information in it? Sure. Some false from what I, I have not watched. I have it. not I seen know. it. Uh, and, and that's another thing. I'm pretty sure half of the people that have something to say about Kyrie right now didn't see it. So that's another thing. Everybody's just calling him, you know, whatever names. And it's like they didn't even see the documentary. Um, you know what I think it is with Kyrie? In the things that he's spoken out about outside of basketball and press conferences, saying down to like flat earth theories and other stuff. Kyrie goes down the wrong YouTube rabbit holes a lot and then takes it to a press conference. That's really what, I don't think Kyrie is a hateful person. Yeah. Don't think he's anti-Semitic. Yeah. I think he's one of those people that goes down YouTube rabbit holes and like the rest of us sometimes when it's 3 a.m. and we're watching some shit and there's no other side that's combating what we're watching, go, damn, I wonder if that's true. Yeah. And then, you know, you then say it to your friends, then you say it at a party and it just becomes part of your opinion because right. you went down you don't even know the youtube account you watched right or what their background is it's just oh i watched this and this seemed interesting and then he gets on platforms that the rest of us don't have where we would spew some of these theories and it wouldn't matter and says them in a fucking nba press conference or on yeah. his twitter with two billion followers that's Kyrie is like the rest of us 3 a.m youtubers <laughs> he just shouldn't do it on these platforms, about, yeah, publications. Yeah, he um again he re- he reposted a documentary that he watched that he felt like you know he just wanted, I guess the people that follow him to watch and take what they take from it and give their thoughts on it. Whatever. Does that mean he's a hateful person? Does that mean he's a racist? Does it mean anti-Semitic? All of these things that people are trying to now push on Kyrie. I think that's unfair. I don't think that's Kyrie Irving at all. His uh past will tell you that. I'm talking about everything away from the court. Uh, things that he's done over the years. People that know him personally, uh, so many people have so many great things to say about Kyrie's character and personality away from the court. Again, like you said, he's made some claims and things he said in the media before that were kind of like, eh, not really. But does that mean he's a, a bad person? No, I think that's unfair to put that on him. I think some of these demands are a little harsh. Uh, we didn't demand the same from Brett Favre when he stole money. Still not. Right. It's, it's getting worse and worse, and no one seems to be reporting on that shit. I mean, you know, he didn't lose any endorsements. Uh, now Nike gave him more jeans. Yeah, yeah, they gave him more denim. Um, like, you know, more budgets. Yeah, so it's more it's charitable like, donations. Yeah, it's like you know, we gotta. If you're gonna set a standard of what athletes and players and people can do, we have to be fair all across the board. And obviously, it is not fair all across the board. We know that because we see it every day. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that Kyrie is going to give in to those demands. I think that Kyrie Irving, the type of person he is, the type of he didn't back down from the whole uh, vaccination thing and people mm. thought he was crazy um, and thought that he was, you know, people called him all kind of names about that. And uh, now people that refused the vaccine and that were fired uh, is now being uh, told that they can now, they are now owed back money. Uh, they have to be given their jobs back mm. and things like that that are now moving into play that we are seeing because they didn't, you know, given to the vaccination demands. So this is obviously somebody that has their own beliefs. Well, Ni- that, Nike also severed ties completely with him. Nike it it appears. Ties. I don't know if that's, yeah, that's a fact again, yet. Again, you know, you severed ties with him for reposting. A, he never even said nothing. He just reposted the documentary. He never said anything. Just reposted a link to the documentary that he watched. And well, people, I mean, I'm, I'm indifferent in that because we all know what that means. Of course, you, you can do the lawyer thing of like he never – Agreed with it or promoted it. He just put it on. We know how Twitter works. We know. <laughs> Even if, if you, you want to say he promoted it. Even if you want to say yeah, he promoted yeah. it. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But my my thing is a lot of the people that are jumping at Kyrie, they, they don't even they don't, they don't even know what's in the documentary. They've never seen it. They didn't watch it. I still haven't watched it. Um, You know, and the thing, what what about Jeff Bezos and, and the Amazon platform? Because that's where it's at. They, they aren't like. They aren't anti-Semitic for yeah. housing this documentary. Like I just Adam Silver got an Amazon package today. Yeah, house. like I just don't. It's it's just not. It's it, you know it's 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 just too many inconsistencies here. And you want to? I know, just got some Nike sneakers via Amazon. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's never just, mind. Forget it. It's just no one wants these, to go down that these are uh, that path. These are uh, you know the, the way they're trying to paint Kyrie. It just isn't fair. Um, and I do think that Kyrie Irving. If he if they the NBA doesn't move on these demands and these list of things that he has to do, I do see Kyrie Irving retiring from from basketball. Oh, I don't yeah. think I don't think that he will. This is a guy who clearly stands his ground and yeah, um, which I know, respect. Which I respect. You know whether you like it or not, you got to respect it. Uh, he stands his ground and um, 
again, we'll have to see what um what comes of it all. Uh, I'm, I don't I like s- the fact that a lot of players are 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 you know talking about. I didn't like what Shaq had to say about Kyrie. I didn't like what Charles Barkley had to say about him. Um, you know, it's just you know again, you could say that you don't agree with some of the things in the document if you saw it. Um, if you didn't see it, say you didn't see it. Say you don't. You know, I don't. I don't know what's in the documentary. I didn't, never heard of it until they started talking. I never heard. Never heard of it until Kyrie we, we posted it and people started talking about it. Didn't yeah, know but, nothing about the documentary. Apparently, it's been works. sitting. Yeah, it's been sitting on Amazon for however long it's been there. But that's that's how, and this isn't specific to that group of people. But how media works is if you don't condemn something, even if you haven't seen it, you can't even say you haven't seen it. You have yeah, to condemn it no matter what that's because just, that's what. Like, come on, that's just say. stupid, man. Like, just and that's I, with everything, not specific. Yes, yeah, that's just stupid. Uh, you know. But again, uh, we'll have to wait and see what comes of it. We'll have to wait and see if Kyrie Irving has played his last game in well, NBA. I'm curious where this where this is going to put the NBA and Nike and a lot of other platforms because when you make a decision like this, more things are going to come out that are on a different type of social justice or other incidents are going to happen. Players are going to say certain things. Yeah. You have now made this stance that you don't fuck with this type of rhetoric or hate speech or anything like that. So now it's time to go through everything y'all allowed. Mm -hmm. Let's get into China. Let's get into all this other shit. You're now you're putting this shit out. Let's go through every single athlete that Nike has promoted. Right. And what the fuck they've done in their, their, private lives or right. what they've said uh, in interviews. And again, none of you people that endorse and sponsor Brett Favre have cut ties with him. Right. He stole <laughs> that crazy? millions of dollars from welfare recipients. <clears throat> and uh, we still haven't heard about any of these companies severing ties with Brett Favre. So again, it is what it is. Um, we know what it is. We see it. We've seen it. This isn't the first or last time that we will see it. And, um, you know, again, we'll just have to wait and see what comes of it. And if Kyrie Irving played his last game as a national basketball player um, or not. Either way, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, We're still on tour. Yes, we are. Atlanta this weekend at Center Stage. Can't wait. Uh, We're in Dallas November 19th at the Southside Music Hall. Yes, sir. We're in Houston the next day at the Houston Improv. And then December 2nd, we are home. New York Sony Hall, uh, which is now sold out. Uh, Congratulations, team. Yes. Sell out. Thank you. Well, we didn't sell out, but we sold out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no. Uh, <clears> that's a bar. Sell out, yeah, yeah, sell out cool. to sell out. You know, mm, get right. the bell out, get the hell out. Ooh. Spin on you. I didn't see what. Spin on you. What? <laughs> Spin. <laughs> Yo, man. <laughs> December 9th. It's we are in another childhood thing. Yeah, you I, talk don't, about? I don't know what Julian's going Yo, through. Yo, they are that clip. Come on. <laughs> Listen, man. It's Rosewood brought you back happened. to a sense of child, a childhood. Firecraft. Uh, December 9th, we're in Seattle at the Neptune Theater. Mm-hmm. December 14th, we are at the Regent in Los Angeles. And December 18th, we end our run, Rory. So sad that we have to end it in your native <laughs> Ireland. I mean, yeah. Boston. Native <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> the Ireland I mean, it is. We're in Boston at the Wilbur. Yes. At the Wilbur, Wil- December the Wilbur. 8th. The Wilbur. The the Wilbur. Wilbur. December 18th, Boston, Massachusetts at the Wilbur. Um, Boston so yeah. shows are always fun, though. I love Boston. They, they have such a good crowd. Guinness and clam chowder. Oh, the riders. Every time we went That's to Boston, we have a good time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that'll round out the uh, rest of the tour, the rest of the run for 20. 20- 22. Yeah. Man. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys at the shows. 2023, we are getting the fuck out of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Man, Germany. Jesus, we need it. Um, so yeah, man. Um, what you got going for the rest of the week? Uh Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta this weekend. We are I'm, in Atlanta. I'm gonna pack tomorrow and then we out. All right. Well, I'm gonna go home, try to feel better, uh, so we can get on the road and meet these people and shake these hands. I don't want to be coughing on everybody. Yeah, everyone stay in for the remainder of the time that we have here. And uh, shout out to Antonio around. Delgado winning the lieutenant governor. Woo. That's, of, that's uh, Julian's brother. That's Julian's of, brother. Uh, New York, yeah. right? Yeah, that's my oldest brother. Shout out to Antonio Delgado, bow, Julian's bow, bow, brother. Bow, 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 Big bow, bow, brother. I'm sorry. Uh, he's a Democrat, Ma. Oh. Uh, he's one of the demon rats. <laughs> Fuck you, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn yeah. demon rat. Yeah. Let's check the flight logs where see where he was at. Mm. <laughs> nah, shout out to Antonio Delgado winning lieutenant governor. Yes, I have some parking tickets I may want to bring to him. Oh, Say Antonio, I can't wait to get you on a FaceTime. I got some issues. I got some concerns about this beloved city of ours. <laughs> Gotta make some goddamn changes, Antonio. Yes. Uh, but we'll be back. Uh, we'll see y'all in Atlanta this weekend. Uh, come out, let's have a good time. Again, rest in peace, take off. For sure. Uh, prayers and condolences to his family. 
Uh, love and light to everybody. Uh, I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. No worry, Ma. Hey, you AT aliens. This is Rory and Maul, and we are coming to Atlanta, November 13th, center stage. And we hope to see you all there. Get your tickets now, so we can have a lot of fun. We love Atlanta. We always have a lot of fun. Are in Atlanta, they AT Rory. aliens now? I feel like New Yorkers are the aliens. Yes, New York are New Yorkers yeah. are the aliens. Atlanta took over everything. Yeah, they did. But we'll be there November thirteenth. Hope you get your tickets now so we can have a great night in Atlanta. Hopefully some special guests will come out, some of our friends in the city. Absolutely. We'll have fun. See you soon.